Right, so this is basically the, the kind of starting point for, for the talk, which is the claim that um, real world coordination requires control over information. Um, in the context of building crypto systems, you have this idea that, oh, we're gonna build all these like on-chain coordination tools that are gonna allow people to coordinate in new ways, but um, if you don't have a way to control the information that is disclosed through that process, you have some pretty fundamental limitations. Um, so uh, in order to, to really achieve this sort of like full dream, uh, we need to have some kind of private coordination mechanisms, right? Um, last year, for instance, there was this project to like have a DAO and like buy the constitution, and you know, it was like this very funny thing. But um, it turns out that if you're trying to win an auction and you're like disclosing in real time what your max bid is, then you will lose the auction. So um, the state of reality is that that actually hasn't happened yet, and all of the projects that people are actually you know, getting real um, market fit out of uh, don't actually have privacy. Um, so to fix this, our strategy is uh, why don't we try to start with like one useful application rather than trying to build a kind of fully generic, um, you know, decentralized, anonymous computation system. Let's try and do one thing and see what we can learn from that. Um, so we're building a, a project called Penumbra, which is basically a, a private proof of stake one with a cross-chain shielded pool. So when you do an IBC transfer, like Dean was talking about in the, the last session, into Penumbra, shields the funds, and it has a private DEX. So there's this question of like, why build a private DEX? And our thesis here is sort of that because every market is also a market in information, then an information leak is a value leak, and so privacy as control over information disclosure is a way to unlock greater capital efficiency. And this means that instead of having a situation where it's like, oh, well, we're building this private thing because we believe in privacy and we think that privacy is a human right, et cetera, um, and we'll hope that everyone else in the world agrees with us, the idea is, well, we should build a system that has privacy in it and is in a context where the fact that it is private is gonna let it outcompete all of the alternatives. Um, so the biggest challenge actually though to building that is uh, the state model. There's a lot of interesting work on uh, better ZK tech um, and I think that at this point, like that's not actually the, the blocker to building private systems. So to just kind of speed run through this part, we have this picture of like, okay, on a transparent chain, generally you have global mutable state, every transaction gets executed, it does something to the chain state, and you know, it sort of ratchets forward. In order to make this private, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna split that up into lots of little fragments, and then each transaction is gonna consume some state fragments, compose those together, and produce some new ones, right? So you know, this is sort of like recovering the, the Bitcoin model, but the reason that you wanna do this is that that way you can replace those state fragments with commitments to state, uh, move the execution into a, a ZK proof, and then all of the, the data is never actually hitting the chain. You're only having these cryptographic commitments. Well, what's really happening there is that you've actually moved the execution off chain. Um, so when you submit something to the chain, you're only sending this proof of like, hey, I did a correct execution on these fragments of state. And so that only really works when there's no shared state. Because if I'm consuming some state fragments, then I obviously you know, need to have some, some notion of ownership, at least temporary, temporarily, that you know, I'm sequencing my changes relative to other people's changes. Um, and this is a problem because like every useful blockchain application that anyone has ever built involves public shared state. That's the whole point of this whole thing is so that people can coordinate about the, the public state. Um, so we have this challenge of like, okay, how do we allow private interaction with public shared state? And to do that, what we're trying to build is effectively an actor model for blockchains. So instead of saying, oh, our transaction is going to like execute some call to a contract and do something, the transaction is gonna pass a message to the contract. Every tr uh, contract is gonna execute exactly once per block, but on input, all of the messages that were sent to it uh, in that block. So now that, that contract can do either batch processing or it can do some application to find ordering. Um, and the per user state is gonna execute asynchronously off chain. 
Um, as a side effect, like I claim that this like mostly solves MEV, but we we'll, won't get into that. Let's see how this works as a, a concrete example. Um, this is looking at the private state. Somebody's trying to submit some private uh, contribution to some swap. What they're gonna do is encrypt the amount that they're uh, submitting to the, the swap. Um, and they mint to themselves a private state NFT that records what their participation is. Now, when their transaction is eventually included in a block, it's gonna be batched together with all these other encrypted inputs. Um, the validators can aggregate those, decrypt the batch total, and then use that to you know, feed into the uh, DEX and compute what the outputs are gonna be. Um, as soon as that's done, somebody then is able to mint, use their private uh, state NFT that recorded their participation to privately mint their correct pro rata share of the batch. And what's really cool about this is that, you know, so this is the, the private state um, side. But when we look at what happens with the public state, you have, you know, all of this trading information um, all accessible sort of in one uh, block by block sort of batched model. So you can actually load up the whole graph of all of the liquidity that's there and globally resolve all of the trading intent um, with optimal arbitrage on this like complete graph. And the reason that you're able to do that is because you know that you're only gonna be doing this computation once per block rather than you know, every single uh, transaction. Um, so you can actually potentially get some like much cooler uh, computation or you can run things much faster. Um, so hopefully uh, I'm eight seconds under. Wow. Great. <laughs> Um, yes, so we have some vague ideas about how, uh, so the, the, the overall strategy, right, is like, okay, we'll try and build like one thing and then see what features of that solution you can generalize. And we have some ideas about how you could do arbitrary computation in this way. Um, effectively, what's happening with that sort of state NFT is uh, you're, you're using it to model a future where when your transaction starts executing, you can't complete the execution because you're waiting for a message to come back. Um, and so you effectively do like a sort of snark friendly Merkleization of all the intermediate uh, per user state, get you know, one unit of, of that asset, and then in the next sort of phase, once you've received a message back, you're opening that commitment and resuming the execution with the additional public input of the, the next message. Um, and I think that, per, that kind of computational framework is like quite general. Is that the private NFT that's public? Yes. So in this in this context, we have um, uh, the idea that the sort of the shared state computation is happening publicly. You could also imagine this working in a a situation like um, more like Alio, where you have uh, a some sort of like third party coordinator that's gonna be doing the execution and then rolling up a proof that they did all of that execution correctly that fits within this model perfectly well. Um, but I think it's a lot, requires sort of more thought about how you build that into a, a product because it's like, okay, well, who's this coordinator, right? Whereas if you start by just doing um, public shared computation, there's an easier story of like, okay, well you're using, you don't have to go find a counterparty or you don't have to go like already agree to use a specific coordinator. Um, but it, it, you know, in the like nth iteration of, of building this out, yeah, that, that would work. Kate has a question. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, um, if, uh, what application actually requires synchronization? Like if you're building on the trading smart contract, you might need to contract with the following set of data. 
Um, yeah, like, so you give up anything that requires synchronous composition where like I need my program to stop the whole world. Um, but I think that's kind of fair because, uh, or not necessarily fair isn't the right word. It's more that if your program, if your program requires that everybody else in the world stop everything while you execute, then you should be prepared to pay the price for that. And as the scope of on-chain activity grows, that cost will only go up. So one way to think about that model is sort of being like interchain in one chain, um, but where instead of having sort of all these different trust domains that are message passing to each other, they're all kind of in, in penumbra. 